So let me just remind you what the experiment was. So we're all on the same page here. We took a cup, right? We filled that cup with water. Um, that water was at room temperature, right? Over here, we had a beaker boiling, right? So there's little bubbles. Okay, and we had the cube in the beaker, right? And what temperature was the cube? Yeah, if, uh, if you measured it, that's awesome. Okay, maybe 96 degrees Celsius. Um, if you if it was boiling and you just assumed it to be 100, uh, that's okay too. All right, but you should know what that initial temperature of the cube was. And then you took that cube and then you put it into the room temperature water. The water heated up and the cube cooled down, right? Because heat transferred, right? And that heat is the symbol we use is Q, right? Now, we can calculate this Q of the water, right? Because we know that Q is equal to the mass of the water times the heat capacity of the water times the change in temperature of the water, right? We know that it started out somewhere around 20, and we also know what the max temp was. That's what you were actually measuring, right? So um, the first thing we want to calculate is Q for the water, and then that'll enable us to figure out the Q for the cube and eventually the heat capacity of the cube. Okay, so let's do that now. So you should have all of your raw data kind of placed into this spreadsheet. All right, and let's go through and we're gonna, so we've got our raw data table. Let's go through and make our process data table, okay? So these guys took, uh, looks like they took uh, two trials uh, for brass, two trials for copper, and one trial for iron, okay? Um, your data might not look like this. Um, you, might have, you might have gotten more data, you might have gotten less data. Um, what I do care about is that you have multiple trials for at least one of the metals, okay? Now, we're going to do the calculations, but we're not going to do them with a calculator and a pen and a pencil. We're going to do all the calculations in the spreadsheet. And this is the, the, the power of the spreadsheet. I'm going to show you guys, and you will be in awe, all right? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, these two columns, right, the, the, the trial number and the metal. Um, I'm going to copy them and I'm going to put them down here just so we're, we're going to be doing a new, a new table. Okay. Now, the first thing I want to calculate, right, if we, go back to, if we go back to our equation, the first thing I want to calculate is my, uh, well, let's put, the, let's put the mass of the water in here. Okay, mass in grams. Now, you may not have measured you may not have measured the mass. You measured the volume, right? But what do we know about the density of water? The density of water is one gram per milliliter. So if you had thirty point one milliliters, you had thirty point one grams, right? So go ahead and put that in here. So I'm going to put thirty point one. 29.8, I love how these guys have the correct number of sig figs, right? You do get a, to the tenths place when you use a graduated cylinder, okay? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is, if I go back to my equation, right, we need the heat capacity of water. So I'm going to put that in my new process, process data table, okay? So I'm going to put the heat capacity, right? That is C of water. Right, and this is in joules per gram Celsius. Right, those are the the units. Right, we always want to have our units in our table. Okay, now this is easy, right? The heat capacity of water is four point one eight. Right, and I can just take this and in a spreadsheet, I just grab the little corner here and I can drag it down. Last thing we need is our change in temperature, right? So how are we going to do that? We're going to take our final temperature of the water and we're going to sub subtract from it the initial temperature of the water. 
Now the temperature is the change of the water, right? So let's put in a, an equation for this because it's just gonna make it easier just so I can drag it down for all the trials. So put equal sign, and I'm gonna take the final temperature of the water, okay, for this first trial, which is 34.4, okay? And I'm gonna subtract from it the initial temperature of the water, which is 23.4, okay? So I've got this cell, which is 34.4, minus what's in this cell, 23.4. Now, this is the beauty of the spreadsheet, right? I've got my equation. All I have to do is click on this little corner here, drag it, right? And now I've got my temperature change for the other trials. Now, I've got everything I need to calculate the Q, right? The amount of energy that has left the cube and entered the water. So let's do that now, right? You need to multiply the mass times the heat capacity times the change in temperature. So Q for water, and that's in joules, right? So how are we gonna do this? Let's say equal sign, right? This cell, times, put the little star there, this cell times this cell. Enter, we've got a wonderful uh, Q number there, right? This is how many joules actually entered the water. Beauty of the spreadsheet, just pull, it, drag it down. That's the amount of energy that left the water. Now, Let's go back to our um, example here, right? So if this is the amount of energy that, that sorry, that, that entered the water, right? What's the relationship between the energy that entered the water and left the cube? It's the same. It's the same, right? The amount of energy that entered the water is the same as the energy that left the cube only for the cube, it was leaving the cube, so we put negative there, right? If you have energy that's leaving the cube, we put a negative sign, right? So let's go ahead and switch that over in our spreadsheet, right? So let's say Q for the, the metal cube. And for this one, it's actually super easy. I'm just gonna put an equal sign because I want it to do a calculation. Negative, and then whatever is in this cell. Okay, and all that does is turn these into negative values, all right? So, now let's go back to our, let's go back to our, uh, our example here, right? So, the goal is to, right, what's the objective here? Find the heat capacity of the cube, of the metal, right? Now, if we have Q of the cube, let's, let's try using this equation for the cube this time to figure out what the heat capacity is going to be. So, Q of the cube is equal to the mass of the cube, right, times the heat capacity of the cube times the change in temperature of the cube. Right? So now we've got everything that we need. We just need to do some rearranging. So I'm going to switch this around here. Q of the cube equals, no, sorry, heat capacity of the cube equals Q of the cube divided by the mass of the cube times the change in temperature of the cube. Right? So this is our equation that we're actually going to use. So I'm going to put in mass of the cube. Okay, uh, last thing we need is the change in temperature. All right, this is in degrees C. So let's go back up to our, uh, our raw data table. So we've got the initial temperature of the metal. And then that's going to be the final temperature, right? The final temperature is both the water and the cube in the water, right? So we can assume it's the same for the cube. So it's going to, we're going to put an equal sign in here. Initial temperature 
cell minus final temperature. Wait a minute, I'm sorry, just kidding. It should be final temperature minus initial. So take final temperature, which is 34.4. Can you not just take the change and tell us the Minus that. And I'll show you, I'll show you where this, this shows up, right? So the temperature change is a negative, but the Q is also a negative. So when we put it into the, the calculation, it's going to end up being a positive. Temperature change. So now we have all the components, right? If we go back, we've got all three of these components ready to calculate, and we can just have the spreadsheet do that for us. So that's going to be in joules per gram Celsius. Equal sign. Q divided by, I'm going to put parentheses here just to make sure that we're not getting stuck on order of operations. And now we've got the heat capacity of the metal. I'm going to take this down to three sig figs. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take the average here just to get a, a, a better. We want to take the average, right, because it's a more accurate, uh, leads us to a more accurate result, which is basically, right, so now you see why we take multiple trials, right? We, we get different values, right? Now for this one, I would actually, let's make one more process data table. Um, I always think it's good to have overall results. And um, So metal, we've got brass, copper, and iron. Heat capacity. That's in joules per gram Celsius. So you expect us to have three tables? Yep. Okay. Um, let's say experimental. Okay. Um, let's get the literature value. Then we can get the difference, right? And then from the difference, we can actually get the what? The difference between the true value and your value. That's the percent error. Okay, the literature value for brass is 0 0.380. Copper is 0 0.385. Iron is 0 0.450, wow. Experimental value minus literature value. Looked like you guys were under for all of them. Percent error is the <coughs> difference divided by the true value and then you have to multiply that by a hundred. Okay, so it looks like these guys got, uh, got worse as they went on. <laughs> Minus 11.